75 degrees outside, and we're looking for a drizzle and maybe some snow as well before it's all over. That means the third member of our team needs to bundle up. Noxie, how's it going down there? No problem, Joe. I'm ready to go, and so is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Got to show you some guys. Keep your eyes on number five right here, Dewan Gross, one of the best punt returners in college football. Already returned three punt returns all the way back for touchdowns this season. He will be a big key. One more touchdown, folks, and that will be an NCAA record. Also on defense, he lines up at cornerback, and he'll be looking to slow down Roy Williams in the high-flying passing attack of the Texas Longhorns. This will be an outstanding matchup of Texas seventh-ranked Texas Longhorns against the Nebraska Cornhuskers in front of a sellout crowd for 253rd consecutive. Mac Brown in his fifth year. What a job he's done with his team on the road. Over the last couple of seasons, unbeatable on the road. And his counterpart also in his fifth season. The first trying times for Frank Solich after 19 seasons as an assistant for Tom Osborne. Nebraska won the toss. They have elected to take their option. They defer to the second half. So Josh Brown's going to be kicking it away. Ivan Williams, the running back. And Selvin Young, the true freshman, going back deep. Young out of Houston. And well ahead. It's going to be young, but he'll stay in the end zone. So Josh Brown doing a good job to take the return game right out of it at the outset. Offensively, the Kia Sarah is starting 11 for the Texas Longhorns. A big guy in the backfield at 6'5", 225 pounds. His numbers so far this season, Chris Sims, and he had a very efficient day last week in their win, 21-10 over Iowa State. Doan, Holloway, Glenn, Dockery. And Scott up front. The skill guys, some of the best in the nation, Benson Williams, B.J. Johnson, Roy Williams, and Brock Edwards to the tight end. So we're ready to go. First and 10, Texas. 7-1 and one record. A number 7 ranking in the BCS poll. And all of a sudden, Nebraska tried to play the role of the spoiler. Benson in the eye, follows Williams, gets to at the most to the 27. It'll be second and three from there. And a little red in the neighborhood, you better believe it when you come to Lincoln, Nebraska. Starting 11 defensively for the Huskers. Their 4 3 is missing Chris Kelsey, first team All Big 12er. Trevor Johnson starts instead. Des Moines Adams second on the team in sacks on the right side. Chanley, Root, and Williams are the backers. They're strong on the corners. Dewan Gross, who Noxie was just talking about, and Fabian Washington, a true freshman, is on the opposite side with Bullocks and Bland at the safeties. Benson again. Can't bounce off people. No gain. Patrick Cabongo would not let go the junior from Montreal. And Patrick's got some size to him. Patrick's 6'6", 315 pounds. Look at the athletic ability. Separate from the block and make the play. That's a gold star on the forehead of Cabongo right there. El Cabong. His first season as a starter. He played nine last year as a reserve. So they are fired up. Now can they hold Texas? It was a first and five. Yet all of a sudden is third and about two and a half. Sims first throw of the game. Underneath going for the first down. And he won't get there. The grab made to the 29-yard line. Taking it in. Cedric Benson out of the backfield. Boy, do you believe it? That is a tough D. Well, Demorio Williams made a very, very sure tackle. The junior college linebacker, the best blitzer that Nebraska has, he was tremendous in the flat, making a very, very sure tackle. Three and out for Texas, just what Nebraska wanted. And as you mentioned, jo Joel, three and out after giving up five yards in the first snap by jumping off sides. Bradford will kick it out of bounds, punted away from DeLon Gross, who leads the nation in returns with a 20-yard average. Low line drive down the middle, believe it or not. Gross doesn't call for the fair catch. Didn't have enough room to take it in. That's why you see the flags. Nifty moves across the 40. He's out to the 42. So he didn't have that little halo. Yeah. And the guy that infringed on that halo was Unger, the best cover guy that Texas has got. Michael Unger broke the halo. No relation to Felix, we're told. No, it's a 10-yard penalty now. Yeah, they'll have it a little bit better off then. They'll have it at the 44 instead of the 42 after the markoff. It's a great field position for the Huskers on their first series of the contest, coming off maybe their best day offensively of the entire season, scoring 38 down against the Aggies on the road. And that also ended a five-game road losing streak last week at AM. They rushed for 381 yards and ran the ball 73 times. Net, 
gentleman right there, Jamal Lord, 30 carries, set a record, most carries by a quarterback in the basket history. Darren Diedrich altering it across the 45 to the 47, a gain of close to three for their starting tailback. But we'll see a punch as Jamal Lord, well, he's averaged 137 yards rushing over the last four games. Not much of a passer, but he's like an extra tailback. Incognito, Erickson, Garrison, Cody, Bill Waltrip up front. Then Diedrich is going to be backed up by a horn. Davies, the fullback. Passer Brock, the wingback. You won't see the wide receivers all that often today. It's Diedrich. He's got more than enough for the first down into the secondary. All the way to the 30, make it the 25. If they can run the ball, it's going to be a long night for Texas. Boy, excellent block by Judd Davies as he worked his way down the football field. He got a nice seal block. An excellent execution by Jamal Lord. Makes the, makes the look. Now he's got Thornton's right here. He's got Thornton in a quandary. He's got his shoulder pad squared in the line of scrimmage. Pitches immediately. Watch Davies. Seal block inside. He turns back on Derek Johnson, allowing... Diedrich to get the extra yards. Nice start from Nebraska. Trips in the backfield. Greenwald joining Davies and Diedrich. And just cracking it at Greenwald, the 250-pound so sophomore out of Scotia, Nebraska. And defensively, third best in total defense in the nation, Redding. He's the standout up front with Tubbs, Wright, Kalen Thornton all the way back from the knee surgery in the offseason. Jackson, Boy, Johnson. The linebackers, Johnson, a Butkus Award semifinalist. Basher and Babers. Boy, do they have a pair of cornerbacks. And Huff and Pearson are the safeties. Caught it second, a little shy of eight. Lord looking to pass, in trouble. This is what he does well, but he can't elude the pressure. Instead of throwing it away, he takes the sack back at the 31. Corey Redding, one of the best rush ends in the nation. Huff got to him early. Flushed him out the strong safety and Redding cleaned up. Well, that makes five sacks for Corey Redding in the last four ball games, counting tonight as the fourth ball game. He has been unbelievable in the last three game stretch. 16 tackles, 11 unassisted, nine for loss, forced to fumble, four sacks. Now he's got five. He has been a one man wrecking crew. Third and 16. Not exactly what Nebraska needed after the 33 yard run. And now good protection. Lord deep down the middle. And almost intercepted, the safety coming over. They wanted Mark LaFour, a true freshman, but Dakari Pearson, the free safety, read the quarterback perfectly. Well, Dakari Pearson has five interceptions, and he almost had his sixth. And you're right, Joel, he was just looking right at the eyes of Jamal Lord. Nice tight spiral, over through the receiver. Pearson had the best opportunity at it, but he could only get one hand on it. Got the right hand up, couldn't get the left hand to secure the pig. Josh Brown, seven of nine, five field goals of 40 yards or longer. This would be a season high. A 48-yard attempt trying to give Nebraska the lead. Oh, yeah. He's got plenty of foot into it, and Nebraska's on the board. So Brown, with the great kickoff to take the return game out, he's an early weapon for the Huskers. A 48-yard field goal. Trying to pull off the upset, Nebraska with the early advantage. They like the college football just a little bit. Only game in town, in fact. <laughs> Josh Brown takes Young out of the return game again. What a great weapon. So, first and 10 from the 20 for the second consecutive time for the Longhorns. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. Okay, Joe, I'll tell you what. Weather could definitely be a factor tonight's game. Right now, temperatures in the low 30s. And later tonight, guys, during the fourth quarter, they're expecting possible sleet and snow. So, points right now. Could be hard to come by. That could be a factor. Check this out. Nebraska fans are well prepared, Joe. <laughs> you know, under uh, under uh, Frank Solich, Nebraska's 37 and four when they score first, and they're on the board first tonight. By formation of Williams and Benson, play fake for Sims, and out of the backfield, Ivan Williams bobbles but gets the first down across the 30. He's pushed out by Josh Bullocks. The free safety could grab by Evan Williams. He's a junior from Cleveland, Texas. Don't forget, he was the starter last year at tailback. He's more of a fullback size-wise, but he gave way by midseason to Cedric Benson. And he had 11 knockdown blocks last week against Iowa State, leading the way for Cedric Benson. He is a good receiver out of the backfield, and Texas went to him right away. 
Sims throwing on first down. Roy Williams, big cushion. Nice moves into the secondary. He's got it across the 40 to the 42. Jeez, the junior from Odessa, he's fun to watch after the catch. What a specimen. 6'4", 210 pounds. And in high school, he won the state championship in the, in the high jump, long jump, 100 meters. He was a one-man track team, and you can see the unbelievable. He's a genetic phenomenon. He really is. First down. So throw it on first down certainly paid off, especially with the easy look on the outside. Say, why not? Let's do it again. Because he had the big cushion on Fabian Washington, the true freshman. He's got to be six, seven yards off the line of scrimmage and Roy Williams. Well, Fabian Washington is playing man coverage, but he's covering a heck of a man. <laughs> and I mean, Fabian Washington is six feet, 170 pounds. Pitch and catch, isn't it? Yeah, and this is a true freshman. Six feet, 175 pounds will give Roy Williams 6'4", 210. It's kind of a, a mismatch in size and speed ratio. The Longhorns, the last team to beat Nebraska at Memorial Stadium. Nebraska's won 73 of 74 at home. Nebraska was offside, no flag. Williams again, victimizing Washington. He's got a first and 10 to the 18-yard line on a deep post. Well, in, in Roy Williams tonight, there was concern about that hamstring. Well, it looks like it's pretty good because it's in the 30s. Temperature's in the 30s. That's not conducive for a guy that's got a hamstring problem. He's running pretty freely right now. Sloan Thomas is probably not going to be able to take many snaps tonight. His hamstring's in worse shape, but he can inside Fabian Washington again, and it's the Roy Williams drive going on right now. Three consecutive catches. They double up the wide receivers on the near side. Williams gets a break. They'll run it with Benson up the middle, and Cedric cracks it inside the 15 down to the 14, where he's met by DeMario Williams, a weak side backer. Good yardage, though, about four, four yards on first down for Benson. Man, it was tough for the sophomore. If you remember on that first series, they couldn't get five yards on three snaps. Benson always gets that pad level low. Very rarely does he get knocked backwards. You know, when he's tackled for loss, it's because of penetration. And look, look at the splits the Texas offensive linemen are taking. They started taking bigger splits against Iowa State, giving bigger lanes for Cedric Benson. Second and six on the toss sweep. Benson will turn the corner. Got around Des Moines Adams. Still Adams holding on. Gross said he took his hands, and the, and the referee said, no, he was already out of bounds. It was on the sideline, but Adams comes up limping. Yeah. So that's a big blow because they're already missing their second team all Big 12 selection last year, Chris Kelsey. He's still bothered by the hamstring. That's the fourth straight game he's missed, Dave. So they start Trevor Johnson on one side, inexperienced junior, and Adams now is going to go over to the bench. And, and on that play, and Adams looks like he's grabbing his hamstring. And, and I'll tell you, it's, it's tough to get loose in this kind of weather. And they ran a fake that they dive, a fake dive, and pitched the ball to Benson to the short side of the field. And he outran Nebraska's defense. First and goal, Texas outside of the seven. Little play fake for Chris Sims, buying some time. Uh -oh. Almost intercepted, jumping the route perfectly. Josh Bullocks, he read it better than the receiver. He did. He did everything but catch the football, and that's the most important thing. His route recognition was extraordinary. He broke on the ball, but he did not catch it. Great blitz pickup by Benson. Takes the defender to the ground. And Chris Sims staring in at that receiver. And I'll tell you, the better position was uh, Bullock's. And I, that, that one, he'd like to have that one again because that hit him right between the two and the zero. And Chris Sims dodged the bullet right there. Williams in the game over to the near side. It is B.J. Johnson. Short side, Roy Williams in the eye on second and goal. Benson and battled his way just to get the handoff. Deep in the backfield, Justin Smith. Smith, a senior from Sherman, Texas, who had four sacks last year. He's now pressed into duty on the edge because of the injuries. And great red zone defense by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. It's all about attitude and desire when you're down here on a short field. And Nebraska's really flying around the football field right now. And, and this is where you might think about going back to Roy Williams, get that matchup on the on the much smaller, shorter Fabian Washington, and, and try to go over the top a little bit of a fade. They have the matchup at the bottom of the at the bottom of the screen. Third and goal outside of the eight. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Sims rush fires back in the end zone out of the reach of B.J. Johnson. Boy, nice pressure on on Chris Sims. And they're going to have to settle for a field goal opportunity to tie this football game. 
Nebraska's defense is healthy. Chris Sims staring down that, that primary target once again, not really looking, uh, scanning the field for, for other options. He had a pre-snap uh, decision in his mind. He was going to go to B.J., and he went there. He went there unsuccessfully. B.J. Johnson could not corral the ball at the back of the goal line. It's going to be a 25-yard attempt for the former walk-on Dusty Magnum to tie it up. Yes. Flag into the air. It's perfect. Offside. So the on the defense. Penalty the line. Points on the board. So long drive stalls on first and goal at the seventh, but still a 25-yard field goal. And it's all even at three after the field goal by Mangum. Got a very short kickoff. Josh Davis running up at the 15, across the 20. Great return to the 35, making the 39-yard line. He's near the 40. So again, Nebraska should be up by more than three. They've had it at their own 40 the last time, their own 34. First time they had it, they started their own 44. Uh, look at the field position now. Texas goes 66 yards in nine plays and has to settle for a field goal because they were backed up. Field position in a defensive contest is so key. Where the average drive start is. I'm getting old, Joel. I played with Davis's dad, Tough Tony Davis, teammate of mine with the <laughs> Cincinnati Bengals. Here's his son playing for Nebraska just like Tough Tony did. It'll be a slight delay to David Horn. He's ripped down immediately by Michael Huff, the strong safety, and that is going to be the final snap of very entertaining, and as Dave mentioned, a defensive battle in the first quarter of two heavyweights, Nebraska and Texas. At the end of the first quarter, it's all even at three. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Sera on Fox. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. It is the largest crowd in the history of Memorial Stadium, the 253rd consecutive sellout. And on the first snap, the deflection and the interception. Coming up with the pick, it's Nathan Vasher as Lord tried to throw it on the first snap of the second quarter, and Corey Redding got yep. his hand up in time. He did. Corey Redding got the deflection. Vasher got the pick. Big play. Coming into this football game, Nebraska was minus four in the, minus four in the turnover department. Overall, Texas was plus seven. Corey Redding tries to make the interception. It's a zone blitz. He's dropped back into coverage. And there's no way Lord thought that Redding was even going to be in that area. He didn't quite control it, but Vasher did. The old tip drill you work on every day in practice, and Vasher finalized the tip as Corey Redding could not squeeze it. But that zone blitz, dropping him off in the coverage, really fooled Jamal Lord. Best field position to start a drive for the Longhorns at the 48. Couple of play fakes. Sims looking deep downfield. Almost a great grab by Benson. Did he come up? No. It was there, then off his pads, as T.J. Hollowell, the outside backer, was trying to keep up with him. Yep. Another native Texan. That was a good matchup, uh, in, in Texas's opinion, to get their running back on linebacker. And, and just off his fingertips, can't throw it any better than that. Benson just can't quite make the catch, but Sims laid it out there perfectly and, and almost hit Benson in stride. So second and ten, out across the 48. After the pick. Looking underneath, Roy Williams. Working on Dewan Gross. And he's got a first down to the 35-yard line of Nebraska. Now a first and 10 inside the 25 of the Huskers. They pick up the blitz. A little chip. And Sims time into the end zone. Off the fingertips. He was trying to get it to B.J. Johnson. That little chip, though, in the backfield, a huge one for Chris Sims. And, and what a great spin move by Chris Sims to spin away from Barrett Rood. Take a look at uh, this is uh, as as we speak. Colorado lost uh, lost in the conference today, four and one now. And here's Nebraska still alive. I mean, this is a huge game. No, look at it. nobody's out of it. Nobody's out of it out of, on these four teams. Everybody's got a shot to win the Big 12. North and taking a look at the South, Texas and Oklahoma still in the dog fight. And how about Oklahoma State? Another big win. Texas saying then they knocked them off today. Second and ten for Sims and the Longhorns. Double move, corner of the end zone, man available. Too tall for Roy Williams as the safety finally got over there. Pat Ricketts, the extra defensive back. I do like the action of the double move of the pump. Yep. And uh and, and really Chris Sims, in, in cold weather, you have to have a big hand to control the football as well as Chris Sims is. And he has a huge mucker. And the double move, the pump fake, got it. And, and Roy Williams just could not quite balance himself up to go airborne 
Fabian Washington was the cornerback underneath him. Over the top, as you described, Joe, came Pat Ricketts, a little cover two. So two straight misses after the first down, and now third and ten. They spread the defense with three wide receivers, two to the wide side of the field. Sims out of the gun. They pick up the blitz. Pocket holds up at the five. What a Man. bullet, but Robert Timmons could not hang on the true freshman from Flower Mound, Texas. Bland was coming over. He knew he was going to get hit, yep. and he pulled those arms back in. Well, in the shotgun, Texas has not been in the shotgun since the Cotton Bowl in January of 2000, and Chris Sims throws a rocket out of the shotgun and hits uh, his receiver right in the hand. You can't throw the football any better than he did to Robert Timmons. Timmons could not quite come up with it. But Texas in the shotgun for the first time since Major Applewhite got hurt in the Cotton Bowl. Mangum tries to give the Horns their first lead from 41 yards away, and he's got it. He is two for two from 25, and now from 41, there is a flag down to the play. Now we have running into the kicker. So it's, uh, you know, now the decision to Mac Brown. You say, do I take the field goal and keep the points on the board? Or do you take it off? And he declines it. He said, I want the points. Put on the points. Easy decision for Mac Brown. So Texas, after trailing four minutes into the game, now has their first lead. Close to two minutes gone by in the second. Percent. Roy Williams, the catalyst, it's through the air. It's not on the ground. Only 20 yards on the ground on 10 carries for Texas. As Dusty Mangum will kick it away to Josh Davis, the junior from Loveland, Colorado. Nebraska winning the hidden yards so far, Joel. They have a 10-yard advantage in average drive start in like four or five possessions. That's half the football field, big in a defensive struggle. And actually, Richmond McGee with the kickoff duty is doing a good job. We've seen him before. At K-State, he took the return game out of it and does it again. So Nebraska with their worst field position to start a drive back at their own 20. Deontay Grigsby. The running back, but it's going to be Lord calling his own number again efficiently with a first down outside to the 40 yard line. Well, I'll tell you, when he gets out on the perimeter, defensive players say, Lord have mercy. Because <laughs> this guy, man, he is something else when he when he turns his up the football field and squares those shoulder pads up. And he's got he's got Davis available for the pitch, fakes the pitch, and, and extends the defense. Nice blocking down the football field once again by the wide receivers and hustling offensive linemen, but Clem did a great job down the field. Nebraska's wideouts are the best blocking group in the country. Lord running the option again. Boy, does he have a lane. Big yardage for Lord. And he's spun out of bounds at the 38. It's crazy. You know he's not going to throw it. I mean, he's only hit 51% of his passes over the first nine games, and he's barely averaged 10 to 12 passes per game. But still, he gets it done. And, and really, watch the motion man and watch the watch the uh, blocking that occurs here up front. He's the pitch, the relationship's there, but Lord turns it up. And look at this lane. Are you kidding me? Look at the blocking right here back inside. Look at the blocking down the football field sustaining. I'll tell you, boy. Lord is, uh, he's got some acceleration. He's got a burst. Lord throwing, believe it or not, on the slant, and it's taken in. Ross Pilkington, the true freshman out of Fort Collins, Colorado. He was almost sandwiched. It helped him catch the pass. It did. He doesn't have enough for the first down, and that hurts. It does not stop the clock to move the chains. Got to spike it. Stop the clock. He does with 13 seconds left. Pilkington played minor league baseball for a couple of years. He was averaging over 20, 22 yards a catch coming in. And that set the record. He had tied the freshman record with 12 catches coming into tonight's game. That 13th catch gives him a freshman receiving record at the University of Nebraska. Not, not, uh, he's like a 21 year old freshman though with that minor league baseball experience. He's got some guns too, doesn't he? He's been, he's been pumping some iron. Tells you a lot about the passing legacy, though. No 13 question. catches, and you've got the record. Yep. Now, Lord throwing and going deep. And a jump ball situation as it's knocked away from the wide receiver. Cedric Griffin defending on the play. He wanted to get it to Ben Cornelson. And a field goal try coming up to look for the equalizer on the final snap of the half. Griffin thought he had it, never had control. And, and oh, but there's the ball all oh, the ground the referee says the ground and he's right the ground helped him secure the catch He never had control as he as he somersaulted backwards. He tried to sell it got up like I caught it No, 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 no the ground secured it for you Last attempt was botched snap is down and it's blocked 
Texas comes through and gets the block. That's the Rod eight. Babers on the outside did it. That's the eighth block kick this year for Texas. Make that three field goals, two extra points, and three punts. Another block kick. So it's a three-point lead for Texas at the break. And the Nissan Halftime Report with Chris Rose. Missed opportunities for both teams, and especially Nebraska. Oh, there's no doubt, Joel. They've had good field position in Texas territory. Fourth down opportunities. Texas penetration. No go from Nebraska. Same thing. Penetration. Played the option. Responsibilities perfectly. Then high snap. Botch field goal opportunity right there. And then blocked field goal. Babers blocks it the last play of the half. See four yards into the end zone. Josh Davis gets it out across the 20. Just barely to the 21-yard line. Okay. Well, extremes offensively when you break down the numbers. No doubt. One team's throwing it well and can't run it, and vice versa the other way. And, uh, you know, it's 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 pretty even, Steven, battle. Other than that, look at the third downs. Neither team can muster anything on third down time of possession. Just about equal. The mistakes that Nebraska had in the kicking game, bad snap and blocked field goal, the difference in this football game, that's why Texas is up three right now. They converted their opportunity. It'll be Lord keeping it on the option, and with good reason. He has been their best threat all night long running the football. He's got it across the 36 to the 37 in the first down. He had 119 yards rushing in the first half, Joel. Over nine yards a pop, and, and he's adding to it right here. Quick decision, getting up the football field, midline option right there, and Dakari Pearson has to drag him down from behind. You know what they're going to do. Now try to stop him. David Horn, nifty move to cut it back inside before he's belted by Reed Boyd, the middle linebacker. Now well, Horn was considered by most services to be one of the top five running backs in the nation last year. He's got better than 400 yards over the last four games. So just starting to pick up the pace. Yeah, he was very quiet in the first half, Joel. He had two yards, average two yards a carry, six yards in, on three rushes. Trying to get him involved more here early in the second half. He gets more than 7-8 on first down. And he gets a rare pitch. Won't turn the corner, though. Indecision really cost him. So he's shut down by Michael Huff. And Michael Huff has come up with some spectacular plays tonight. Well, this guy's a freshman. And, and he's a heck of a freshman. He's played some cornerback this year when they had injuries at cornerback. Watch him right here. He's going to blitz. Now he says, I, I get the option. He feathers it and, and releases from the quarterback and takes the pitch man. That is, a, I mean, he was a one-man defensive stopper right there. Huff was extraordinary. He couldn't, he, he really, Lord couldn't decide what to do with Huff, and Huff made him, made him um, make a bad decision. Horn stays in the backfield as the single behind Jamal Lord. And Lord gets a nice push. Easy first down into the secondary. There he goes. Will they make it? Just out of bounds inside the five at the three. First and goal, Nebraska. Nice hustle by Babers. Touchdown saving tackle. See if it's big or not. If Nebraska doesn't score, it's huge. If they do pump it in the end zone, it's not as big. But Babers showing the speed. But let, Lord has been an incredible. And he's got that burst, that acceleration down the sideline. He goes and, and, and Babers uh, tracks him down inside the five yard line. You could see at the point of attack, though, there was a real nice push on that right side of the offensive line. Yeah, and, and, and Johnson overran it. They, they got a piece of Johnson, and, and Derek Johnson overran it, could not get himself under control. Shut down, David Horn, inside the two. It'll be second and goal right about the two-yard line. Let's see if they go back to the big back before it's all over on this sequence. Darren Diedrich. Again, did, did Babers make a four-point tackle by, by saving the touchdown, or... Is it going to be a moot point? See what Texas does on the defensive stand. See what Nebraska does in the goal-to-go -go situation. Bring the extra one in, Crewald, to join Davies and Horn. It'll be Horn making a miss in the backfield, but he can't get to the goal line. There was great penetration up front. Right at the point of the handoff, Johnson and Wright combining for the hit, and it's going to be third and goal. How tough has it been? Oh, that, that's Texas has been incredible on third and fourth and short. They had two fourth down stops. They've been tough on third down. Nebraska was one for nine. Here it is third down again. The biggest third down of the game because it's from the two yard. It is ironic though. They've taken the ball out of the hands of their best rusher in the first two snaps in first and goal situations. Now third and goal. Will Lord keep it? He'll throw it. Touchdown Nebraska. He went for the tight end. John Bolding. Great call.
Little play action. Get the ball to the tight end. Tremendous call. Nebraska regains the lead. They had it early. Four plus minutes into the game. They were up three nothing on a 48 yard field goal by Josh Brown. He'll try to make it a four point advantage and bends it in just barely for a 10 6 lead. Impressive way to start the second half for the Cornhuskers. 79 yards out of the gate on the drive. And the final two on a pass to the tight end, John Boulding. So, first touchdown of the game. Lord finding John Bowling, but the big play, the run by Jamal Lord. And overall, the way he dominated the drive. And that's what Turner Gill is talking to Lord about right now, saying, man, that was tremendous execution. Keep it going. Brown, a high short one. It'll be taken by Ivan Williams. And that's being kind to say it's being taken by Ivan Williams. <laughs> he barely got to it at the 21 yard line. Sims in the first half, 14 of 27 for 173 yards. He had one picked off, and the delay doesn't fool the Huskers. Aaron Rue, the middle linebacker, he had penetrated efficiently anyway, and it's another loss. So now it's going to be second and longer. Well, that time Nebraska blitzed. It's, it's first and 15, and it was a safe blitz whether Texas threw the ball or ran the ball. Watch watch the blitz. Watch the blitzing action here. And, and they're taking their gap responsibilities to prevent the run, and they're also got rush lanes to pressure the quarterback. Great call on first and long. Second and 17, Sims not out of the gun. Looking to Roy Williams. They forgot about Williams, and he might have a first down. He's out of bounds right at the marker at the 31. Boy, not only do they have a cushion in the corner, but for some reason, the defensive back looked like he was looking for a slant and bit inside. Yeah, he, he did. He, he got frozen. And, and Roy Williams is a size, speed, ratio nightmare. 6'4", 210 pounds that can run like he can run. And, and he's got a size 15 shoe. This guy's got a hoof on him, and he can pick him up and put him down. I mean, that's 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 incredible. Look at the, look at the, look at the, look at the hoof on that guy. I mean, that's, that's covering some real estate. When he gets striding with that 15 shoe. So you can hear him coming. Yeah, it's like. Noxie, while they get the measurement. All right, Joe, I talked to Roy Williams before the game. Guys, you may recall he strained that hamstring against Houston a few weeks ago. Hasn't been healthy, but he said this is the best health he's been in since straining that high, that hamstring against the Houston Cougars a few weeks ago. So Roy Williams, just about 100%. No question about it, Noxie, because when you factor in the weather, I mean, the fact that he can keep that hamstring loose in temperature in the 30s like it is, I think speaks volumes to the health of that hamstring. So that's a great, great point. They have the first down. So they convert on second and 17. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 31. Should be a free down, but no flag. And Sims in trouble. Dumps it. Williams has it. Makes a miss. Big first down. Oh, wow. Barely stepped out of bounds. Oh, he stayed in. Well, he was out. But they didn't mark it. They didn't mark it at all, but he was out of bounds. His foot definitely went out of bounds. Maybe it didn't touch down, but we're on that sideline. He's got it to the 20-yard line. This will be an interesting look. Yeah, it, I, I think he, he was tiptoeing that sideline, but there was an official right there looking down the sideline. And, and, and look at the strength, the arm strength, the Sims getting hit, falling backwards. Williams cuts back inside, makes rude miss. Babers, gross, he stays in bounds, and he and he, oh. he he's in bounds, tight rope in that sideline, and Williams is down job, the sideline. Tremendous effort by Williams. Just in then. It looked like the edge of the foot might have hit the chalk. Texas is not complaining, and they've got a first and ten inside the 21. Four-point lead for Nebraska, showing the blitz. It's a run blitz. Benson. Wow, taking Rude for a ride. Wow. Was that a rude ride? <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know what you got to do on after that? You put a token in for that ride. You can't take a free ride. You got to you got to pay with a token. And, and now they talked about big plays in the passing game. And Sims under pressure makes him pay. And, and it was just an incredible effort by Ivan Williams. He's the run blitz we talked about earlier. You got to stay in your in your path, your gap control responsibility, penetrate the line of scrimmage, and disrupt. Make Benson make his first cut in the backfield. He got about four. Now the fade into the corner. Williams oh, jump ball, oh. touchdown Texas. Gee, on gross. You said it. A uh, beautiful, 
pass from Chris Sims where only Roy Williams could get to it. A little bit too high for Dewan Gross. Well, you talk about answering. I mean, Nebraska scores in seven plays to take the lead, and Texas comes right back down the football field with big plays. Sims to Ivan Williams, Roy Williams. It was a Williams drive with Sims in there a little bit, sprinkled for good measure. Well, just to get, he gets both feet down. He had not only one, he had control of the football, both feet down on Gross and blue fade. Boy, Williams is a weapon in the fade. Bang up for the point after, and don't talk about that card going for two because you still have that Bengals card with you. So it's a 13 to 10 lead. We didn't see a touchdown the entire first 30 minutes. Now, they're coming in bunches. Texas and Nebraska. Richmond and McGee ready to kick it off. And Texas has the lead again after their own 79-yard drive. Follows a 79-yard drive from the Huskers. Two plays fewer to get that 79 yards covered. It'll be Davis across the 15. Beats wow. the man of the 30. Wow. Only the kicker. And McGee does a good job. And was it McGee? Now uh, Dorian McCullough with a defensive back. Looked like too good a tackle for a kickler. Exactly, kicker. exactly. <laughs> he went he went after him hard, got the helmet across the bow, took him right down. The son of tough Tony Davis. Josh Davis, who was amongst the national leaders last year in kickoff returns, finds a seam. Look at that cavity. Man, and, 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 and Davis says, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of that. And, and, you know, there was a missed tackle by Texas along the way by Richmond McGee, the kicker, and you'd expect that. Locking up, you know, you, you, boy, hands outside the framework of the body. You gotta, you can get away with those from time to time. Taylor reversing his field on first down. Nothing there. Great pursuit by Johnson. Derek Johnson, who we've not talked about much because he's not. They've been maybe going away from him, but he has not been in the middle of things tonight. Comes through there, and that's great pursuit. Yeah, it is, and, and he can really run. And, and, and I think what Derek Johnson's done a few times, Joel, is overrun it. You know, he he goes to try to get to the point of attack with reckless abandon. Sometimes he can't break down well enough and kind of runs by it. Gain of only a yard, but it looked like Taylor was going to pick up something. And now the belt by the linebacker, Reed Boyd. You feel those. Those are body blows. They wear on you. Uh, yeah, the Lord, Lord's durable. I mean, Lord took a bunch of hits last week against Texas A&M by carrying the ball 30 times. In, in one football game. That was the record for the quarterback position at Nebraska. So now does he throw on third and eight? I don't think so. I run the option. Spread him out, run that option. He's got bit. Dietrich behind him. Wilkinson and Thomas tight to the bottom of the screen. And he's going to throw the football. And at least he might. And going deep. Not close to his intended target. Trying to get it to Wilson Thomas, who leads the team in catches with 23. And Corey Redding finding the Lord to put him on his wallet. Yeah, and, and Corey Redding has done this with regularity, and, and he just gets the edge and, 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 and gets the hit as Lord's released in the football. And Wilson Thomas plays on the Nebraska basketball team as well. He averaged four and a half points a game and almost four rebounds a game last season. He's six foot six inch wide out. That's who Lord was trying to go to, but couldn't get it done. Larson kicks to Nathan Vasher. And sends out a beautiful punt. Now, can they get it inside of the 10? Yes. He'll help with a nice hop. It'll die inside the five. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Those hidden yards you were just talking about in special teams. Boy, do they pay off. And now, ball security of the utmost for Texas back thrown three, leading by three. Willie Gamble to throw from their own end zone. Gross is matching up with Williams. Now, good cutback move by Cedric Benson and into the secondary is best run by far. Before that, he was only 12 for 32. And you find out about your offensive line going into the end zone when you're first and goal and coming out of your own end zone when you're backed up. It's power football. And look at Dockery get things done and, and finish and look at Benson run through tacklers and, and get yards after first contact 60% of his yards this season are after first contact and, and, and significant contact made by bullets but Benson ran right through it he shot him easily and now it's a first down of the game of 17 yards the longest run of the night for the Longhorns so what do they do 
throw it on first down. And Roy Williams has it underneath against Dewan Gross for a short gain of five. Now that is the 18th completion by Chris Sims. It's interesting because he throws a serious fastball. He's had about four or five drops easy tonight. That's got to be tough in this weather. Yeah, it, 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 Chris, and, and here's the offensive coordinator, Greg Davis, that's doing a good job of mixture, a nice little mixture of, of the run and the pass, particularly on first down. And we'll talk about Chris Sims maybe putting a little more air under it and other things here after this play. Second and five. And on the night, only 36 yards rushing for Texas. The blitz picked up. Now Sims has a lot of territory. He'll get the first down, sliding down. And boy, he did not get a good spot at all. He got a spot across the 43, and he, he started his dive right at the 44 near the 45. He doesn't have the first down. It'll be third in the yard. As you described, though, Joel, the blitz pickup by Cedric Benson gave Chris Sims an opportunity in a lane to run the ball. Watch Benson. Boom! I mean, stuff him and knock him backwards. And then the Red Sea parted for Chris Sims. But Benson showing that, hey, I not only can run it and catch it, I can block a little bit too. Excellent hit. They brought the strong side backer. He stood up Ira Cooper. They saw more And now Sims gets the first down on his own. Good idea. He's 6'5". Yep. Big kid. Fall forward. And, and there was a critical play against Iowa State where he went airborne, and he was simultaneously hit by linebackers from Iowa State. It was like fourth and an inch. And it was very, very pivotal play. And, and they spotted it where he just got it by an inch. And Chris Sims says, like you, Joel, I'm 6'5". I know I can get an inch when I go airborne. Now, this is huge because it starts at your own three. Right. You go the length of the field and put Nebraska down by 10. Good job, Chris Sims. Ivan Williams on the dump off. And in the first half, Dave Lapp, we talked about not looking off your primary early in a game. Well, Chris Sims feeling very comfortable now after the primary is not there. Yeah, he checked down very well to his back out of the backfield. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with picking up five and having second and five. You're on schedule. And his uh, primary guy, Roy Williams, came up with his eighth 100-yard receiving game of his career already in this football game and only the second this season because of that hamstring injury. He gets five. That's great on first down. Now, could Benson match it? I don't think so. He's met by Kabungo. I got a feeling somebody's going to come up with something cute with this kid. Patrick Kabongo, it's got to rhyme. It's got to work, especially after hits like that. I'll tell you what, that is one massive man. There's Craig Bull, much maligned, under fire. But boy, our def his defense is stepping up tonight. I mean, there he, he, his whole game plan was don't let Benson get established, make Texas one-dimensional. If they can go two ways, we're in trouble. Make him throw the football to win it, and it is gone according to his game plan totally. Chris Sims is making plays, though. Now 271 yards of plays, but only 45 yards rushing. So you're right. It's been one-dimensional. Now, huge third and seven for the Husker defense, trailing by three. And a pocket is there for Sims. Now can Brett Robin get to the marker? Yes! Breaking a tackle inside the 40. Just coming out of the backfield of the 37, getting away from Demario Williams, a weak side backer, who was responsible for the back of the flat. And Demario Williams... Junior college transfer, best blitzer. He's only 6'1", 215 pounds. He's built more like a safety and, and just ran right through him. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, even, uh, wasn't even much of a challenge for Brett Robbins. He ran right through Williams, who's not the biggest linebacker in the world for sure. Excellent run after catch. Drive started back at the Texas three. It's a first and 10 at the Nebraska 37. Nebraska jump. Three down. Benson will make the most of it. And he's got another first down, I believe. It was a free down. Yeah. I think it was the big man. I think Kabongo jumped offside. When Kabongo moves, you don't miss him. Don't listen offside, to the quarterback. Defense. defense. Penalty decline. First down. Don't listen to the quarterback. Watch the football. When the ball moves, you move. And look at this block up front. Bingham is just taken out and, and, and sustaining the block. Nice job up front by Texas. John, uh, the, uh, the center for, for uh, uh, Texas, Jason Glenn. Did a nice job of sustaining contact and finishing the block. Robin, the only one in the backfield. He'll pick up the blitz. Sims over the middle. Oh. Complete for a first and goal. B.J. Johnson. What a throw. That was a rope. Whew. Man, that was a dart, wasn't it? B.J. Johnson, the healthiest of the wide receivers. He came up big against Kansas State for over 100 yards in receptions and ran a little inside. 
route, and, and boy, I'll tell you what, Chris Sims put that thing on the money, first and goal. He's over 300 yards passing now. You know what I like, even with the heat coming, and he knew he was going to take a shot, he led Johnson perfectly. He's tough. I mean, you know, there's no doubt his teammates respect his toughness, both mentally and physically. High formation, first and goal from the eight. It'll be Benson. Will Davies in there as the blocking fullback, but not much. I don't think they even got a yard. But Kevin Smith, good-looking redshirt freshman, made the stop. The underneath tackle out of Macon, Georgia. No and huddle. now, hurry up for the first time. Umpire wasn't ready. Nice play fake. Coming back on it, B.J. Johnson. He had to leave the end zone to make the catch. And it'll be third and goal outside of the two. Okay, he now. was available early. Okay, now. He just dislocated his uh, ring finger on his throwing hand. He rolls to his left and throws another dart. <laughs> I mean, that's something. That's something. You talk about gritting your teeth and, and fighting through it. It's 35 degrees or less, and, and he's got that injured hand, and he threw a rocket. I, he's impressive, I'm telling you. This drive started with 8.34 left in the quarter. Now third and goal. Can they hold him to three? Sims looking for Williams. Wow. Touchdown. Too easy in front of Dewan Gross. And they got a flag, and it may be a celebration deal. The flag came out. It may be a celebration penalty on Texas. So now bang them in to try to make it a 10-point lead satisfaction of the face of Chris Sims, and deservedly so. What an impressive drive. And most of it through the air. They had that one nice run by Cedric Benson. So commanding advantage now for the Longhorns. A 10-point lead for the Texas Longhorns, and now in jeopardy, the nation's longest winning streak. 26 games for Frank Solich and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, now the ball is going to be teed for Richmond McGee at the 50. I just send it right out of the end zone. Give Jamal Lord, Nebraska, a long, long field. Don't get cute. And that's what he'll do. So Nebraska, first and 10 of their own 20. What's the latest downstairs, Jim Knox? All right, real quick, Joel, offensive line, Longhorn's feeling good as long as, as well as Tim Nunes, the Longhorn offensive line coach. Also, big blow for the Longhorn's defense, Marcus Tubbs, their big lineman. In the locker room right now, nursing a bad calf. He is through for the rest of the game. Also, Roderick Wright, they were checking his knee as well, but he's playing. All right, Noxie, thank you. Tubbs 45 up. seconds left in the quarter, and that is tough. Tubbs must have gotten leg whipped a little bit. When you have those calf injuries, a lot of times offensive linemen are leg whipped. Two tight ends. The two wide receivers to the same side where Derek Dietrich is going, and Derek Dietrich almost into the secondary. Big stop, Derek Johnson. Big time. Otherwise, Darren Diedrich has probably got his best run of the night. So, 26 in county, the winning streak for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They've taken 73 of their last 74 at home. And don't forget who stopped the 47 game streak on Halloween 1998. Same Texas Longhorns. By a 20 to 16 count. And the scoreboard says 20 for Texas right now. Lord. Torpedoed all of a sudden Derek Johnson heard somebody called him on his cell at halftime and said those guys are dogging you upstairs <laughs> I tell you there have been adjustments at the half because we've seen three touchdowns already when we didn't see any in the first half The 20 to 10 lead after three for the Texas Longhorns trying to raise their record to eight and one And you're watching college football Saturday presented by Kia Sara on Fox Sports now College football Saturday presented by Kia Sara brings you back to Lincoln, Nebraska. First snap of the fourth quarter. Lord on third and about six or four rather. On the edge, he'll get it. Nice block down the sideline to the 40-yard line. And a big block by his wide receiver to help him out. Ben Cornelson allowed him to turn the corner and gave up his body against a much larger guy. Yeah, he peeled back on a defensive lineman. And, uh, that's that you know defensive linemen don't like that, but uh, you can see the action as, as Lord sees the, the the lane to take advantage of Big defensive lineman in pursuit shoot right there in legal. I mean, that's just a great block That's the best blocking group of wide receivers in the nation Now Lord throwing on first and ten deep down the middle Oh at the 25 the catch is made touchdown Nebraska 
It's there. Harrion, the tight end. The tight end, Harrion. The rare throw to Harrion. And Harrion, just that little play action fake. They got the tight end over the top. Tracy Westrom did it many times during his career at Nebraska. And they really liked the potential of Harrion. And, and Frank Solich says we've got a tight end with tremendous ball skills and, and can run great routes. And they went over the top to Harry and 6'4, 215, like a big wide receiver, ran the good route and great throw by Lord. Brand new ball game, 29 seconds into the fourth quarter. That is only the third catch for Matt Harry in this year. It's also his second touchdown. What a throw. Double coverage. Texas took almost eight minutes off the clock to take a 10-point lead and it vanishes in about a minute as Nebraska moves 80 yards. 60 on the final pass to the young man that very rarely gets into the game. The tight end Matt Harrion playing behind three seniors. Brown kicks it away. It'll be Selvin Young and he's going to bring it out. Three yards into his end zone and wow. won't make it to 20. So the momentum has certainly shifted Nebraska's way as they chop down a true freshman from Houston, Selvin Young. Well, we talked to Mac Brown earlier today about the importance of this game against Nebraska. Well, there is uh, a lot to be accomplished, not only in the Big 12, but the BCS and the bowl games that are out there. And, uh, but more than that, everybody talks about the end. What's better than playing in Lincoln, Nebraska against a great Nebraska team with a, a classy bunch of kids and a great coaching staff that we respect so much on national TV with Fox. That's pretty good stuff. So why worry about the end when we can enjoy right now? Ivan Williams, big yardage on first down. Nice little circle pattern out of the backfield. He's got it past the 33 to the 34. Well, Mac Brown, give credit where credit is due because he's won 11 straight on the road. Yep. 15 of the last 17 in his fifth year. And he's got a formula that is definitely working because of the previous 10 years, Texas was not even a 500 club on the road. And he went into Manhattan and won there. Now he's at Nebraska and he's got the lead there. And, and I agree with you, Mac. You know, it's like there's nothing better than a, than a classic confrontation, conference confrontation, the Big 12 on Fox Sports Net. From the 35, first and 10. Sims looking deep. And throws it away. Nothing available. Good idea. And who would like to say that they own the only two wins over Nebraska since 91, covering 75 games? Absolutely. And look at Chris Sims closing in on 400 yards, 392 yards is a, is a career high tonight. And the other thing about Mac Brown, only three active coaches have won here at Memorial Stadium. Mac Brown could win for the second time if they hold on tonight. Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden. So that's pretty good company. 7.04 to play in this three-point affair. They put it back on the ground and keep it up top. Williams and Johnson. Wide side of the field. Cedric Benson uh -oh. into the secondary. Look out. He's got a first down across the 45. Moves the chains. And that is so important to take another 90 seconds off the clock as he's pulled down by Bullocks around the ankle. That was a very sure tackle by Bullocks. I thought Cedric Benson might might pop this a little bit. You can see Bullock's right here. Watch him make the play, and, and that's that's very, very nice job. Because uh, Benson a lot of times will run through, though, because Bullock's didn't get his head across the bow, didn't get his head in front of his body, but he hit enough of them to get him down. It's the fourth possession of the second half for Texas. Talk about a change. Texas had the ball eight times in the first half. We didn't have any touchdowns in the first half. Nebraska also had it eight times. Cedric Benson, a little shoulder shift. Maneuvers his way across the midfield stripe. Man gives him about three on the first down carry. Second and seven. A long six. Sims on a pretty play fake, but they're keeping up with Williams that time. That's where he was available against the linebacker. That time, the linebacker kept up with him. That naked bootleg has been awfully good to, to the Texas Longhorns tonight. He's checked down to his fullback on, on one particular scheme. To Ivan Williams successfully. He's hit Roy Williams multiple times. It's been a very good play for Texas. They've gone to it about a half a dozen times. Texas just failed for the first time on third down of the second half. There's six of seven in the second half. This is a third, long six, almost seven. Out of the gun. 
Underneath, it's there. The bullet again. Who else? Roy Williams with a career night. Don't forget, he had 25 catches over the first eight games of the season. He's got 13 tonight. And, and when you have a healthy Roy Williams that can run like a deer and he's built like a bull, you got a problem. So Gross is uh, he's going to bail. This is called man coverage, but he's bailing. He's trying to get in his hip, and he just drove him off the foot, off the line of scrimmage, down the football field, and just hooked up. Came back to the football effectively, and a ski Reich was thrown by Chris Sims. He stepped up in the pocket, and his mechanics are awesome. From their own 19-yard line, where the drive began. It's at the Nebraska 39, and it's Cedric Benson waiting for a block to develop. It never gets there. In on the hit, Brian Bingham, along with T.J. Hallowell. Got a short game, but more importantly, next snap is going to take place inside of five minutes left. You know, it, it, at some point, you are crowding the line of scrimmage. You've taken the way run the run away from Texas. But when the quarterback's thrown for 400 yards, do you continue to light, let him play pitch and catch? Craig Bowl continuing to go with the same philosophy. Make Chris Sims make plays to beat him. And so far, it's happening. He sends Benson out of the backfield. He's already thrown for 402 yards. Benson was available. Goes back the other way. Jump ball. And it's taken away. But Gross got a piece of Williams before the ball came in. It'll be 15 yards and another first down. Yeah, Gross had great position, but... When he when he squeezed Roy Williams, he squeezed him away from any opportunity to make the play. You got to locate the ball on its way in, don't you? Yeah, in order to in order to make a play on it, you most certainly do. Because he he had good coverage, and and what you try to do is when you, you use the sideline as a, as an extra defender, as you described before, Joel, and he and he, he jumped into him prematurely. He. He, Roy Williams kind of conned him a little bit. Because Gross on that. Yeah, Gross was looking yeah. at his eyes, and Roy kind of conned him to, into thinking the ball was arriving sooner than it really did, and it drew the pass interference penalty. Major Applewhite, the last one to throw for 400 yards for Texas. That was against Oklahoma State back in 98. Sims out of the edge, hitting his tight end. Brock Edwards, big yardage inside the 10, first and goal of the five. Well, he, now the play action was just beautiful by Chris Sims. That's the naked bootleg once again, and Josh Bullock's missed the tackle. And, and Brock Edwards has been large, hadn't he? I mean, he made the play when the ball went through Rude's hands and makes another big play here. The naked bootleg, the fullback and the tight end have been available. Roy Williams has been available. Greg Davis has done a great job of getting Chris Sims out of, out of pocket with all by himself, no personal protector, the run action kind of freezing the Nebraska defenders and getting out there in the perimeter with a run pass option. And he's got 419 yards now, two touchdowns and interception. I'd say he stepped up big in this big game, didn't he? Coming out party for Chris Sims, especially if they could seal the deal by putting him into the end zone here and go up by 10. Timothy Benson down to the three, second and goal. So Brock Edwards with a 17-yard grab after the 46-yarder earlier on the deflection you were talking about, two for 63. And right now, he has used seven different receivers. Williams, Williams, that's Ivan and Roy, Jeffrey Edwards, B.J. Johnson, Brett Robin, and Cedric Benson one time. And remember, earlier in this half, his ring finger was going sideways, and they had to put it back into place, reduce it back into place on the dislocation, and he's still throwing seeds. They've held on to the football now better than four minutes, getting it with 7.36 remaining. Second and goal, Benson. Can he get there? Touchdown, Texas. That just might do it. Well, that's Benson's eighth rushing touchdown on the season, and it is a large one in this football game, and Chris Sims take a bow. And uh, Benson, you take one as well. That was the finalization of a heck of a drive. Jason Glenn, the center for Texas. It's a little inside zone. And, and he does a good job of, of picking one off and getting to the linebacker level. And, man, he's knocking Root around. He's knocking Bland around. That's uh, that's desire by the center. Mangum for the point after well, the big go. one to make it a 10-point deficit for Nebraska. So will it be over? The nation's longest home winning streak, 26 on the line for Nebraska. Chris Simmons, the difference, putting Texas in a position to succeed all night long, throwing for better than 400. Welcome back to Lincoln. Some sad eyes in the state capital. 
But from the Lone Star State, well, they're smiling on the sideline. You, know, you see the dreadlocks? The last guy that won here had dreadlocks as well, Ricky Williams. <laughs> Good call. And now it is going to be the tight end picking it up. That's Kyle Ringenberg taking the short pooch out past the 35. From the 40 on first down, the pitch and a big one to Josh Davis. First down in Texas territory. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, as you can imagine, all, all smiles on the Longhorn sideline right after that touchdown. Chris Sims came to the bench and said, I want Sunday off. You see, if they win tonight, it looks like they will get Sunday off. No practice for the Longhorns on Sunday if they win tonight. All smiles down here on the Horn sideline, guys. I'd bring him back just to work on the ground game. Not Josh Davis with a long game. Oh. And now Lord going for the bundle in a jump ball. And the catch made, no, but a flag on a pass interference call yeah. as they wanted to get it to the wide receiver, Ben Cordelson. Getting him earlier, though, Cedric Griffin. Now, let's not forget when Texas went up 20 to 10. Nebraska came back with a touchdown about 60, 70 seconds. That's all it took on the 60 yard pass to the tight end, Harrion. So they can get the quick score. They can. And all of a sudden, That's the onside kick. Defense. 15 yard penalty from previous spot. First down. Look at, look at the rosy cheeks on our referee. I mean, it, it's chilly down there. He's got the cheeks rosed up pretty good. And, and you know, Noxie, take Sunday off yourself. It's been cold down there, man. Get a little uh, little hot chocolate. He's got an igloo, though. A couple of marshmallows. We built one for him. Mac will give you Sunday off, too, Noxie. From the 25 of Texas, short side of the field. The option working again for Lord. And he's close to a first down. Gets nine, but clock the biggest enemy for Nebraska. They'll work in the hurry up. Lee Jackson in on the hit. And now Lord on second and a yard. 2.50 to play. Wide side, shovel pass. Nice. Davis spinning, first and goal inside the nine. That'll stop the clock for the movement. Corey Redding in on the hit, the senior from Houston. He's wearing the same number as, as his dad, Tony Davis, and he's a Tasmanian devil, whirling dev, dev, devil just like his dad. I mean, he's it's a clone. Now Taylor on the slant, and contact. That's going to be pass interference as they wanted Pilkington. But a tackle early by Michael Huff. He hit him low. Yeah, you can see And now sandwich. it's going to be because it'll be at the point, I believe. Pass interference. So that'll stop with 238. But as I mentioned, the ball replaced. they got the ball with 317. They haven't needed a minute to take it from their own 40 to a first and goal at the three. So Texas letting them back in it way too quickly. Now, the trips in the backfield with the power on. Lord on the pitch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Darren Dietrich. Boy, just a great cut block on the edge. Watch, watch, watch the cut block right here. Boop. Choo. Down. I mean, that, that's extraordinary. Made it easy for Dietrich. When you take people off their feet, you know, pancake, that's huge. But after it makes it a three-point game. And now, do you need to go for the onside kick with 234 to play? And I bring an update because you still have two timeouts left, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Right, and it all depends on what Frank Solich thinks about his defense, you know, the momentum of the game. Can his defense stop Chris Sims? He's thrown for over 400 yards. If they don't execute it, you have to think of the worst case scenario. If they recover the football, it's easy. They don't. Can his defense stop Chris Sims, Roy Williams and company, and get the ball back for his, his offensive football team? So you, I would go for the onside kick because I don't know if I can get the ball back. I, I, that's it, not, they're I, not setting up for it right now, though. Uh, Texas has got their hands team out there, though. Texas is anticipating the onside kick. They've got all the all the uh, skilled people up front. All these guys right here are, are running backs, defensive backs, and wide receiver types. The only one back deep is Selvin Young, the running back. And it's going to be kicked away. So Young will bring it back from the goal line. Gets outside. Needs a block. And a nice move across the 35. Good field position. Nathan Basher instead rather brought it back. Not the running back in the double number situation. Longhorns with one timeout remaining. Talk about the two for the Huskers. You better hold on to the football. Cedric Benson 
In the eye behind Will Matthews. Benson. Maybe a half. Time out, Nebraska. Ryan Bingham with the penetration and the hit. And the one thing that you have to do if you're Texas, Chris Sims, when he had the team huddled up on the sideline, two hands on the ball. Don't let him rip the ball out of there. Ball security is a must. And what Nebraska is talking about is forcing a turnover. Get the ball out of there. So here we go. Second and ten. Three-point lead for the Longhorns. 2-14 to play. Now one timeout remaining for each team. Well, they put it up this early. No. Benson. And Benson gets it across the 40 to the 42. Last time out of the use by Nebraska. With 2.06 left. So a dilemma for Mac Brown. Do you leave it up to your defense? Do you keep it on the ground? Because then you can take it down with another running play inside of 90 seconds before you have to punt the football. I think what I do here is I go back to that play that's been so good to me, the naked bootleg and give Chris Sims a two-way go out in the perimeter. And I would I would configure it where I have more than one receiver to go to. I'd have my fullback at, at closest to the line of scrimmage. I'd have my tight end down the scrimmage intermediate and somebody a little bit deeper. I'd give him different quadrants to throw to, and, and I'd get him out of pocket where he can throw it away without suffering a intentional grounding. And the final option is him to run it, which is the, the worst option. But I might think about going back to that. 20 to 16 Longhorns. That's their only loss. And their last 74 at home. Crowd has been a factor. Williams is going to set up on the short side. Believe it or not, he's against the rookie. The true freshman, Fabian Washington. Here we go. The ball game on the line. Washington fell down. And Roy Williams has sealed it for the Longhorns with a first down to the 47. So if they were going anywhere, you knew what direction Chris Sims wanted, and that was in the direction of number four. Are they going to call a, a celebration penalty on Roy Williams for doing the nesty plunge? I mean, after he caught the ball and knew he had the first down, he fell flat in his backside. And It's got to be a dead ball foul. The first yeah, right. down stands there. Right. Fabian Washington went down in coverage, and, and Matt Brown can't believe that they're calling the... Are they calling offensive pass interference? What are they calling here? Looks like they're calling offensive pass interference on Roy Williams. Because they're going back. Texas is headed back. He must have pushed off. Or will it be a dead ball foul, though, as you mentioned? I think they're calling they offensive calling pass interference. I, That's I, I unbelievable. Think, I, I think when when uh, Fabian Washington went down, they say Roy Williams pushed him. And that's a, that's a phantom call, I think. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Wow. In previous spot. Mac Brown can't believe it. Another look. At the play that Here it could is. determine the outcome. Here it is. As, as Roy Williams comes off, the, and he pushes with the right hand, and they, and they say that the push of Roy Williams' oh. right hand knocked Fabian Washington down. But Washington had his hands up as well. What do they call it? The old chicken fighting inside? And Mac Brown can't believe it. He said they're both. They both have a right to that spot on the field, and, and both were pushing and shoving. And, and because of the size of Roy Williams, he overpowered Fabian Washington and knocked him to the turf. He didn't slip on the turf. In the official's opinion. He was pushed down to the turf by Roy Williams. Big right paw there. On uh, third and 22. Now, will Nebraska bring more than the four? Will they bring five in the rush? Only four. Quarterback draw. Just keep the clock going. It's a good idea. That'll take it down inside to a minute to play. When they do snap it again. It's rolling. They still haven't started the play clock for the punt team. And let's see when they do start it. This is working against Nebraska. They still haven't started it. They're anxious, as you can tell, the largest crowd in the stadium's history. Now they started. How about Chris Sims' night tonight? 29 of 47, 419 yards, two touchdowns. He was, he had a couple that they couldn't quite handle that fastball he was delivering in the cold weather. Now, you do not need to snap it until there's a couple of seconds left. Bradford's got to keep it away from Dewan Gross, who leads the nation in punt returns. Ooh. Now it's a wobbler down the middle. Gross at the 40. Halo. Back down. It's Halo. going to be a penalty. Uh -oh. Here comes Gross. Look out to the 40. Slowed down by the punter. And finally pulled down wow. in field goal territory already. Unbelievable. you got to keep it away. You don't let him touch the football. The best in the nation at it. And they gave it to him. Yep. And Gross 
I mean, he had four returns of over 25 yards this season. Make it five. Man, and three of them he's taken back for touchdowns. They've got it all the way to the 16, so forget about a field goal. They've got plenty of time to win the game. Oh, heck yeah, they do. They, you know, the way they're running the option. And boy, Gross did a good job of securing the football. Man, did the big player step up at the big time. Oh, look at that score. He caught the back half of the football. It almost went through his hands. Man, what a game. And how big is that penalty call, that offensive uh, interference penalty it's now? It's the difference in the game. Whew. Otherwise, Texas walks away with a win easily. Yeah. Only one to the backfield, Davis on the option short side. No timeouts left for Nebraska. They've got to hurry. Got to spike it. You have to spike it. Got to conserve some time. It'll boil down to if they can't get it in. Josh Brown, their place kicker, there's the spike. It stops it with 16 seconds left. And here is their one snap to try to get it into the end zone. Well, and, and I think they're debating on the sideline whether they kick now because if they have a bad snap, right, they can they kick another, another, try, try, another try at it. So, so they may be thinking about it. They're huddling up on the sideline. You can see them all. Frank Solich is talking about it. 16 seconds. You know, if I get a bad snap, I get another shot at it. Do I take a shot at the end zone? I mean, all those things going through his head right now. Or does he say, Mr. Brown, jog out there and tie this football game right now. And we'll take our chances in overtime. Here we go from the 16. 16 seconds left. Looking into the end zone. Back corner. Intercepted. Wow. Intercepted at the goal line. Basher. What a play by Basher. Unreal. And that will preserve the win. Man, what a game. And Lord can't believe it. And Basher says, thank you, Lord. And that's exactly what Mac Brown, the whole Texas sideline, is staying, saying right now. And, and Frank Solich can't believe it. Turnovers and penalties, untimely turnovers and penalties at crucial situations have hurt his football team. None more than this one. Throws into double coverage. Vasher underneath. Griffin over the top. And, and Vasher makes the play. You only have to get one foot in. He does. And he gets his right foot in, too, before his butt hits down. I mean, great play. Throws into double coverage. Boy, I guess it would have been better to kick that field goal at that time with Brown and take your chances then. Without a doubt. Now with 10 seconds to go. Just a knee, but don't forget they're at the one. So you want to take that knee, but move forward. Yeah, you don't want and to take that'll do it. And that's exactly what Chris Sims does. Well, Chris Sims definitely our Dr. Pepper player of the game. He finished tonight throwing for 419 <laughs> yards, a career best, and, and what an emotional Brown. night for Mac Brown. Mac Brown will sleep well tonight. He will sleep. He's emotionally and physically exhausted right now, like he played every snap. What a game. So a three-point win for Texas. Talking to his counterpart, so much respect between these two. Guys that have been head coaches in this conference now for the last five years. Let's head downstairs to Jim Knox with Mac Brown. Thank you, Joe. Mac, congratulations. What a game. 27 24 comes down right to the end. Defense comes up huge. Couple of big defensive stands. Fourth and one. And then right there, Nathan and Basher seals the deal. Well, Jim, is a great football game. Nebraska does it as good as anybody in the country. But the Texas Longhorns prevail tonight. What a tough bunch of kids. What a good bunch of coaches to come in here and win twice in, in 75 years. And the only two, I mean, 75 games, and the only two teams to do it. Uh, that's great. Frank Solich does a great job. The Nebraska team has our respect. They kept coming back and coming back. Lord, they, it looked like A&M when they came back in that fourth quarter, but really proud of uh, our football team tonight. Matt, congratulations on another big victory. Let's Thank get Chris Jim. Sims hey, in here. Chris. And, and tonight, this was the best quarterback in the country. I don't care what they say. Exactly right. So Mac and Chris embraced. What a huge victory, Chris. You came through. They came out and they wanted to stop the run. They stopped the run. You threw for 419 yards tonight. You know, we knew we were going to have our opportunities, and uh, we, we did a great job of taking advantage of them tonight. And, and we played really well offensively all together, and I'm just happy to get out of here with a W. What does this win mean for you personally? Biggest victory so far since you've been here at Texas? It, you know, it could be. Hey, playing in Nebraska, this is maybe one of the most fun games I've ever played in my life. And, uh, Man, I mean, beating Nebraska, we're, we're, we beat them twice out of 75 times. They've never lost a home. It is huge. Congratulations on the big night. All right. Joe? All right. 500 yards of total offense and 419 belong to Chris Sims. So that'll do it from Lincoln. Nebraska, 8-1.
the number seven team in the nation, prevailing by three, 27 to 24. For Dave Lapman, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Let's send it back to the studio now and rejoin Chris Rose, Kevin Winslow, Artie Gigantino.